All right, it's been a few weeks since I got this new excavator, and it's been a pretty good machine so far, but I would like to take care of some maintenance and do a few upgrades to it. So let's bring it in the garage and get started. All right, so sometimes people ask me about these Yanmars if they're hard to get parts, because it's a gray market machine. And the truth is I've never, I don't ever need parts for them because they never break. But this one here I just bought and for whatever reason someone lost half of that breather. So I just got this, it came straight from Japan. Now it took a few phone calls to get it. But here, you know, but they, you know, there was no problem. Just gotta pay to ship it from Japan, that's all. See, it's important that this vent is here because it it keeps like a little bit of pressure on the hydraulic system. You don't want to just have it open. All right. All right, so one issue this thing had since day one was with the blade. See, the control for the blade, you know, when I pull it up, it doesn't move. When I push it down, it barely moves. That's up. You can see here, the blade barely moves on the thing that So we gotta figure out why this thing, that lever doesn't have enough travel. It's not binding up or anything, it's just not going far enough either direction. And you can, I can feel that it's being stopped right here. Um, so let's, let's mess with this. Oh, all right, well there's, all right, well there's something limiting it right there, that bolt. It's hitting that, let's turn that down. Gave it a lot more travel. What about the other way? But now I can adjust the cables, what I can do. I mean, it doesn't really need that thing to stop it. I mean, the cable will stop it. Well, it pushes down nice now. It's got a ton of travel that direction. I think I can just adjust it and get the travel the other way. Well, at least it's turning easy. That's going to be it right there. <laughs> All right, cool. That's fixed. All right, these panels can go back in. This thing I'm bolting on here now, this is the relief valve for the hammer that was added aftermarket.
All right, I just let the engine warm up on this for 10 minutes. Let's change the oil. Look at the oil drain on this thing. It's an inch and an eighth bolt. That's nice, you'll never strip that out. And that's nice. Oil filter is very easy to get to. And it's draining right into the pan. Look at that. Didn't even make a mess. All right, to keep track of the oil change, we got 8,759 hours, and we're in 219. All right, and we are right at, perfect. All right, this plate's been off since the, the first five minutes of me owning this excavator. Hose went bad. And that's right there, that hose right there. It's fixed. All right, let's change the gear oil in the final drives here. So here's our drain, there's our fill. Let's get the drain on the bottom. All right, well that's a good sign that it's got oil in it. Sometimes, like this is often a very neglected part, component, and um, you know, like if it gets a little oil leak, there's not much oil in there, and, and it'll lose the oil, and then people won't realize it, and then it'll ruin the final drive, which is an easy job to replace. But and I see they're easily available. It's just they're you know can be expensive sometimes. You know what's awesome? Look at that. The oil is right there. That's right where it's supposed to be. This thing doesn't leak a drop. All right, it's best to fill these from the bottom. And that's it, that's full. Yeah, you can see the oil right there. These are fine. All right, I bought the 
this paint a couple years ago when I was painting that forklift. All right, I got the spray adhesive. I'll try that to put on these decals. All right, the last video with this excavator in it, I broke this hammer. Let's fix this. All right, that's all out. I actually bought a fiberglass handle this time.
All right, we'll let that harden up overnight. All right, here's that hammer a couple days later. So that epoxy hardened up. All right, so one of the biggest issues I want to address is with the undercarriage on this machine. So you can see a few, we got a few things going on here. One, it looks like this track spent a lot of time on blacktop, being that it's worn so smooth. And that one over there has much more tread on it because it must be a newer track. The other big problem we have here, we have some bad rollers, uh, especially this one here where it's completely seized up. It's not even rolling. Wore the bottom of it smooth, and as it was doing that, it was carving out this track. And then you can see all the other rollers, the bearings are completely gone in them. And they're all like that. All right, the first step is to let the tension off this track. Under that cover, we have a big nut with a grease fitting in the center to loosen up the track, loosen up that nut. Now that looks like that's welded. Don't know why someone would have done that. Are they all welded? I found something to hammer. This this bolt goes all the way through. That's why I've never seen rollers like that before. All right, my plan is gonna be to just melt the heads off both sides to try to knock that roller out of there. If this does anything for him first. Something happened.
broke the head off. All right, that's how it's done. All right, so in another video, I covered converting this machine to a quick change, which allows the buckets to easily be changed in under a minute with no special tools. So this bucket here I already did in the other video, and what it is is the ears get replaced with these ears, which link up with that coupler. So I have two more buckets I wanna do, so let's just do them real quick. So the reason I wanna do it, these buckets pin onto my B50, but I never use them because it's just too annoying to do that. So this is a trenching bucket, which I've never even really tried this thing. Um, it, looking forward to trying it on a few utility trench jobs soon. And then this grading bucket, which I really like this bucket. It's great when you're grading, but I'll only put it on if I'm using it all day, which translates to it not getting used very much. So if they're converted to quick change, I'll probably be more likely to use them. So I got two more sets of ears right here. And let's get started. Look at this, you can see this is the second set of ears that's been on this bucket.
you know what, this will just be so much easier if I take this thing right off. Because it's just, you know, with it on the machine, it's just, it's not lined up right. Alright, this is how to do this. Put this all together first. Then put it on. Then, then it's automatically right. Just gotta position this thing in the right spot. Alright, this bucket's shaped a little bit weird, but I have that on there. I think that's as good as it's gonna be. That's where it's supposed to be. Let's get this thing out of here to weld it. All right, I just finished up burning those in, so that went pretty well. All right, now let's do this grading bucket. So when I just did this bucket, it also had a round tube like this right there, and I cut out the entire thing to weld these ears in. Since this one's a little bit different, instead of cutting out the entire tube, I'm just gonna cut out the center section where these ears go, and I, th I think that'll be easier. All right, let's get started. All right, I just finished burning those in, so that went pretty well. That looks nice the way, instead of cutting out that whole round piece, just uh, cutting out in the center where it needed to be cut out. You couldn't have just notched these because if this was still here, there would have been clearance issues. Yeah, it looks straight. That's fun. So now I got two more buckets for this machine and uh, they also fit the Kubota.
All right, one more issue I want to address on this machine is with the operator seat. There is two problems with the seat. The first one is that it's all ripped up, and the thing that's annoying about that is this foam will get wet, and then running the machine, your pants will get wet, and that's very uncomfortable. The second problem with the seat is with the height of the seat. See, when I'm sitting on the machine, my head is pretty much touching the ceiling. I can't even stretch out. That's pretty uncomfortable. Really, the seat needs to be a few inches lower. I had a roller once that had this same type of aftermarket seat on it, and it was very annoying. It just put the operator up too high. And I have it adjusted as low as it goes, but that's just the wrong seat for this machine. So let's get that changed. Hey, look at that. I almost left those pliers in there. All right, day later, this is dry now. Just like that. Actually, that's not bad. Feels more roomy on this thing now. I was thinking I was gonna put some two by fours under this, but you know, I, I've got like that much over my head. Uh, you know, the controls are right. Everything's within reach. I think I'm just gonna bolt that down. All right, so what worked well having this about the edge of that was good and they gave you this stencil. So. All right, so let me explain what's going on with these tracks here. It's been a while that this machine has had one new track on it and still one old one. All right, so the problem is with the rollers. I'll show you. All right, so these are my original rollers here. Now they're probably original to the machine. They fit in here and they're fine. This was one of the ones that still was somewhat usable, but since six out of eight were bad, I just wanted all new ones. So this was the first set I bought and they fit in the machine. The problem is this mounting surface where it bolts up into the machine. Now, the original ones had this big flange, which was like a washer, and then it also caught the bottom of the track frame. This had nothing. Now, that, I don't know if they wanted you to reuse the original ones, but one, they were different, and then two, they were all chewed up, and they're hard to get off of there. Um, I, I could have machined something like this, so I took, I mean, it would have been a bunch of work. You would have had to take a piece of round stock, you know, use a lathe to turn out this center hole, and then use a milling machine to mill down half of it. And I considered doing that, but, 
you know, then I, I got these on eBay, and one, these were cheaper than these. These came locally. The problem with these is that they were in China, and I had to wait for them to come from China. This is the, you know, that's the box they came in. But I actually had them in like a week, so I'm going to send these back. But see, at least these ones have the, you know, the plate that catches the bottom of the track frame. You know, it's kind of different than this, but it's... It, it's doing what it's supposed to. So let's go put these on. Alright, little tip here. It worked better on the other side where I cut the heads off first with the grinder, then torched it because it was hard to tell what I, you know, it messed up this metal a little bit. But it'll still be fine. See, once, once there's a washer on there. Alright, let's see if these rollers fit. Yeah, it looks fine. Yeah, see how much nicer that is, the way it catches the bottom of the track frame?
see, like here, here's one of the old ones, and there's the new one. Now, I mean, there's a good chance this would have been fine forever, but there's also a good chance it would have cracked right around here and ovaled out these holes really bad. You know, I just, I just really wanted to do it right, you know. It's, plus, these were cheaper. I hope I don't have any problem returning these, though. You know, this was over a thousand bucks for these things. Well, that's good. This thing travels a lot smoother now with the new tracks and rollers. So I got it next to my 50 here to kind of compare them. So you can see the uh, 37 is a little bit smaller than the 50. All right, so that's good. I'm looking forward to using this new excavator a bunch this year. It's nice that it has that quick change bucket and it can run a hammer. And it's nice that I have multiple of the same machines, so that will help, you know, prevent me from having to move them around so often. So I definitely hope this uh, 37 is unbreakable like this 50. You know, this machine, I've had this a long time, and I never have to fix this thing. The thing has earned the title unbreakable. Um, being that this thing looks identical to it, I'm sure it is. Um, you know, these are a really good design that they have no electronics or any stupid computers in them that will just get electrical problems instantly. That's, um, you know, a lot of people are always asking me what to look for when buying an excavator. Um, you know, I definitely got to recommend, I'd say if you're getting a Mini, I'd look at Yanmars first. You know, I don't know if the new Yanmars are as good as these. Uh, I hope they didn't start ruining them with too many electronics. All right, so these machines are almost 30 years old, but with their nice, simple design and how easy they are to work on, I don't see any reasons why these machines couldn't, wouldn't be going strong in another 30 years. So I guess this 50 could probably use a quick coat of paint. It's getting, I've never painted it before and it's starting to look a little rough. All right, so I'm gonna add a thumb to this thing because it doesn't have a thumb on it. Um, and I'm gonna include that in the next video, which is gonna be completely about thumbs because I kind of have a lot of stuff to say and people keep asking questions regarding thumbs. All right, so one other thing. Last time I just put a track on this 50 and the old track, I cut it up into pieces and signed them and threw them on eBay. And for anyone who didn't get a chance to get one of those. All right, so anyone who may want a piece of this track, you know, I could cut it up. And uh, the nice thing about this one, looks like I could fit it in one of these, these flat rate boxes, which which will make sending them out a lot cheaper. So if anyone thinks they might want this, let me know. I'll just I'll cut them up and uh, sign them and, and throw them on eBay. And I'll, I'll just do it as buy it now. I'll do it cheap. 